Take a look at the concept sport car racing on a truck. The flow adjusts to the presence of the body surrounding it. If you take a closer look at the flow near the body surface, you can notice that the flow looks somehow different. Can you see it? Let's get closer. Even closer. Can you see it now? That is a boundary layer, a really thin region where viscous effects are important. Boundary layers are essential physical features of bounded flows, and they provide insight on physical mechanisms which control phenomena like drag or separation, and they must be accounted for any fluid dynamic based design, like aircrafts, cars, or ships. The concept of boundary layer was first introduced by Ludwig Prandt in 1904. He observed that the viscous effects are contained within the thin boundary layer and that the fluid region outside the boundary layer behave as if inviscid. This concept let us obtain analytical solution of a wide range of flow problems. Let's now analyze a viscous flow over a flat plate. The flow passing over the flat plate generates a boundary layer starting from the leading edge of the plate. As we move along the plate, we can see that the boundary layer thickness grows. Looking more in detail, we can also notice that the boundary layer is first smooth and then bursts into eddies and swirls. Now, let's find out how a boundary layer forms. Let's imagine that we have a flat plate that is moving in a fluid with a certain velocity. We can describe the fluid at different locations from the flat plate using some particles. As the flat plate moves, it will pull the fluid that is in direct contact with it, and this will affect the particles near the plate. Farther away, the fluid will not react to the plate motion. Hence, the different particles shown here will move with a different velocity depending on the distance from the moving wall. The particle that is directly touching the plate surface will move with the same velocity of the plate. This is like having a hand immersed in water and then suddenly pulling it out. Part of the water will follow your hand and stay on it during the motion. Similarly, the fluid will follow and stay attached to the plate that is moving. Now, if we move with a plate, it will look stationary and the fluid will move around the plate. In this case, the particle touching the wall won't move. This is due to the non-slip condition that states that the particle in a boundary will not move relatively to it. As we move away from the wall, the particles will have a finite velocity that increases up to a maximum that is the free stream velocity. We can now define some useful parameters for the description of a boundary layer. As we mentioned before, the boundary layer grows from the leading edge of the plate. Here we can see the boundary layer edge that represents the position where the flow velocity is equal to the 99% of the free stream velocity. The distance between the plate and the boundary layer edge is defined as the boundary layer thickness and is commonly represented by the Greek letter delta. Now, you can see that we have two different regions, an inner one and an outer one. The inner one is a viscous zone that defines the boundary layer. The outer one is an inviscid zone 
where we can assume that the fluid is inviscid. Let's define now the reasoning underlying the boundary layer theory. The boundary layer is assumed to be thin. We can analyze the characteristic time scales of the boundary layer to define when this layer will be thin. The first time scale is connected to the convection and represents the time that a particle will take to move over the plate. The second time scale is connected to the viscous diffusion that represents how the viscous effects diffuse normal to the wall, namely the time for the momentum defect to propagate normal to the wall. For a boundary layer to be thin, the convection time scale must be much larger than the viscous diffusion time scale. This means that taking the ratio of the convection time scale over the diffusion time scale, this result should be larger than 1. The terms presented here under the square root are nothing but the Reynolds number. Hence, we found that the Reynolds number must be much larger than 1 for the boundary layer to be thin. A Reynolds number larger than 1 means that the convective effects are more significant than the viscous effects. In our analysis, we will assume that a boundary layer is thin for Reynolds number larger than 1000. The boundary layer is laminar for the range of Reynolds number values that span from a thousand to a million. This range is only for guidance since different conditions, such as surface roughness and free stream conditions, can trigger the transition to turbulence at lower or higher Reynolds numbers. The boundary layer is not always present around the body. For example, there are no boundary layers in the separated regions. In this picture, we can see a small region where the flow separates due to the sharp curvature of the body and then later reattaches to the body. Flow separation occurs when the main flow stream detaches from the body. Once the flow stream is no more in contact with the surface, it cannot generate any more a boundary layer. Our goal in analyzing the boundary layer is to develop a solution for the velocity distribution within the boundary layer for given geometries. Knowing the velocity distribution, we can calculate the shear stress at the wall and thus the skin friction and the drag force acting on the body.